Hi everyone! Hey, it's another beer review! Yay! Um, so what are we going to be doing today? Yes, we have a new beer to try. Again, it's a local beer because we're doing a local kind of uh, southwest area um, in the next few weeks. Um, i previously done a nice beer from uh, St. Austell Brewery. And uh, today we're going to do Butcombe! Yes, it is a it's a brewing company. It's it's not a, not a product recommendation. <laughs> if you want to call me anyway, um, it's a it's, it's a bitter. Although it doesn't actually say it's a bitter. It took, it took a while to kind of find out what type of beer this was because it just says Butcombe, original beer. And uh, yes, it's uh, from Bristol. You know, up and down the kind of a uh, Mend area of the UK, Bristol. Yep, uh, a lot of good things have come out of Bristol. Russell Howard isn't one of them, of course, but such is life. Um, so yes, it's a bitter. It's a 4.5%. It's a 500 ml bottle. It's half a litre, 50 cl, whatever floats your boat. It uh, says Bristol Bomb. Now, that's an interesting one. I thought they brewed beer. Maybe in Bristol they're doing something else. Now I will take my hand away from the. Look, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of bland kind of a label, but it'll be interesting to see what it's like. Now I do have some notes on it. Um, I have sorted some things out. So again, it's Butcombe Original Beer, or Original Brew, as sometimes they refer to it as. Um, it is from the Butcombe Brewing Company, based in Bristol. Um, it's a classification as a bitter, although it doesn't like to say that on the label very much, but um, I've checked on the website, it is listed as a bitter. It's a bottle. Now, this is an interesting thing. It's, an, it's four and a half percent, which is fine, but I will get to it later, but there is some differences with this beer, depending on what format you get in, but we'll get to that. We'll do the bottom description first. Now, there's a little bit of spin on this. Yes, let's try and kind of reel, reel you in. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Um, so yes, uh, don't make no never mind. This is a fabulous beer, and we should be really getting down to it. Right, no one, don't make no never mind, and uh, no right in it. Right, so here we go. Bottle description. You can spot a true original a mile off. Can you? I think you'd have to be a little bit closer than a mile off to kind of uh, spot an original sometimes. But apparently in Bristol, you, a mile is close enough. And that's a very good eyesight there. Yeah. Um, like our original brew. There you go. Original brew, but they call it original beer on the label. There you go. Contradiction. Anyway, Bristol born. Uh, maybe brewed in Bristol, but Bristol born. Maybe the idea of it maybe came. Maybe the recipe was conjured in Bristol ball I mean, did you actually give birth to it it's uh, and uh, made to stand out well not by the label it's quite a bland label really I mean the last beer reviewed is up over there um it's an Austral beer and uh, it's got gold on it look shiny things this doesn't um so yes Created from Maris Otter Malts. Now we have discovered that uh, Maris Otter Malts are very popular down in the southwest region. Um, the class is very good malts, and I can testify to that. I have drunk beers with Maris Otter Malts, and they have been very nice beers. I haven't turned around and said, mm, that's not a very nice malty flavour. No, it's been a very pleasant one. So I think we're quite happy with that. And a secret blend of hops, uh, English hops, sorry, English hops. Well, the thing is, uh, there isn't that many different types of English hops. So I don't really think that the blend would be really that extensive. Uh, I really probably wouldn't say it'd be really that secretive, um, especially if you're only buying certain malts from, or certain hops from certain suppliers. And there are a limited amount of suppliers in, in the UK, especially in England. So I think that's a bit of spin. Um, meticulously crafted before craft was even a thing. There you go. Crafted before even craft was even a thing. But I know that real traditional beer drinkers don't like the word craft because it tends to be flippantly used for any beers to try and give them a kind of a, 
a better reputation than they probably really deserve. It's crafted. It's a craft beer. Well, it's a mass-produced beer, but you just put craft in the label. So again, a lot of traditional ale and bitter and beer drinkers, especially in the UK, don't particularly like the word craft. And especially quite a lot of brewers don't like the word craft either. A good traditional beer is a good traditional beer. You don't need the word craft on the label, and you don't need to kind of associate it with the craft kind of a cult. I said cult. I might be thinking something else, but I did say the word cult. If you'd like to replace any letters of the word cult, then feel free to do so. Um, it's a distinct bitter. There you go. So there we go. They finally says it's a distinct bitter. Clean and refreshing flavour has been Bristol's go-to for a good time since the 1970s. 1970s, where they all knew. I mean, they used to have party eights and everything else and party sevens, which were basically actual proper tin cans. Ten cans of beer. There was no ring pools, no fancy kind of pouring spouts and all that. You opened it like a tin can. And uh, yes, we, we, we knew beer then, didn't we, in the 70s? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, there's one good thing. You didn't have Stella Artois, Carling, and some of these other crap beers that, uh, going about in the 1970s. So maybe they did know a bit better about beer than we do now. Um, from the first sip to the last drop, you'll never taste a beer quite like it. Now, again, that doesn't actually say it's good. I mean, if you've never tasted a beer quite like it, you could be, oh, I've never tasted a beer quite like it. It's absolutely awful. Or, i never tasted a beer quite like it. It's absolutely wonderful. It can go both ways. It doesn't really kind of inspire confidence one way or the other. It's a very kind of uh, silly statement to make. But again, a little bit of spin, really in. So, yes. Um, now, on the untapped app information, on the untapped app, um, they gave it a 3.39 out of 5, and it's only got 12,000 or 12k check-ins. Now, here's the difference. It is available in draft. Yes, it's available in draft. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's only 4% in draft. So if you buy it in a pub on draft, it's only going to be 4%. But if you get it in the bottle in a pub or from a supermarket or off license, then it's going to be four and a half percent. So there's a half a percent increase in alcohol volume because of the bottle. Now, what's that reason? Is it because they maybe add something else to it to make it more stable and palatable when it's in a bottle? Or does it not travel very well and have to keep the alcohol content kind of low for the kind of more... Uh, open faceted um, media of draft i don't know but anyway it's uh, kind of strange that you've got a higher alcohol content in the bottle than you do in the draft i mean i've only come across that in some situations like with guinness and things like that so but that's also because of um how it travels and it's different kind of media forms that they have to reduce the alcohol content for the draft version compared to the bottle but again of course the traditional bottle version isn't even carbonated and gassed or whatever it's actually a flat beer so um so yeah a bit kind of strange but it'd be interesting to try it in draft but today we're trying it in bottle but i would like to try it in draft just to see if there's any real differences in uh, the flavors because of the different alcohol content or maybe it doesn't affect it at all we'll have to see tasting notes it smell is hoppy malty and peppery with pepper oh yes so that could be interesting to see a peppery beer me wonder what the hell they're adding to it or maybe what they're drinking before they smell it um and of course that wonderful taste that taste that everybody gets and it's oh it, everybody knows this taste it's clean it tastes clean Would anybody like to kind of uh, enlighten me what the hell clean tastes like it's clean taste it um <laughs> it's dry it's dry, but it's wet. Um, so it's dry mm, and notably bitter. There's a surprise. Surprised they haven't gone down the grapefruit side. You know, usually if something's got a bitter taste to it, oh, it's grapefruit, it's grapefruit. Let's give it the, let's give it the citrus fruit flavours. Mm. So yes, clean, dry, notably bitter. All right, well, that's lovely, isn't it? So I'm going to enjoy this because I've never tasted clean before and I wonder if I would recognise it. But anyway, enough of this. 
frivolity. Let's get it on. So it contains malted barley and wheat. Now oh, there you go. Right. Right. Oh yeah. There we go. That's it. It's a very, very light smell indeed. I don't don't get any paper. Hardly any malt or even any hops. In fact, I get a very, 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 very faint beer smell. Very faint. Anyway, let's give it a go. Let's see how it pours. All right. Can't resist. Anyway. Obviously, yes, it's got more of a bitter kind of colour. It's got that more kind of a uh, caramel -y kind of uh, translucent colour. So as you can see, it's a lot darker than a pale ale. There's the reason why it's called a pale ale. And uh, so, yes, bitters are usually darker. Not as dark as, like, say, a, a Scottish heavy. Um, but I would say it's definitely getting there. It's not a stout. Stouts are obviously a lot darker. But I think it's a case of the closest... A bad head either. Again, it just kind of gives me a feel of. I don't know. It just it doesn't look natural. The head, but anyway. Right. I'm not getting any really hops. I'm getting a beer smell. Just a general beer smell, but nothing distinct like hoppy or malty. No paper at all, absolute none. So I think that's a lot of fanny, put it that way, a lot of bunkum. But anyway, no paper at all. I mean, it really is a very nondescript smell, of just a slight kind of waft of beer, because a kind of nondescript beer smell, but nothing highlighted. But anyway, that looks nice enough. It has got a head on it. Um, again, it just doesn't look as more natural. But we'll see what happens when we work our way down. It might be better, make it more cling to the glass now. But yeah, cheers. Let's give it a go. It is a bitter. We'll give it that. It is a bitter. But I say clean to the mean kind of chemically. It does have that slightly kind of. Uh, you got the bitter aftertaste, but it does give it ever so slight notes of disinfectant. To be totally honest, I mean, I mean, uh, it is a bitter. Um, it's got that kind of bittery kind of army aftertaste, a bit like we used to get with kind of not as strong as pronounced as like tenants or McEwen's and that type of stuff, but you do have that kind of army kind of metallic -y kind of uh, bitterness. It, it's very kind of uh, normal to have in bitters. Um, so yes, you do get that dry. No, there's no dryness at all. Dryness is a little. You know that you get that kind of thing. There's nothing dry about it, to be totally honest. There's nothing dry like you would probably get in a wine sense or anything like that, or even in a beer sense. It just no clean 
I honestly don't. I don't know what they refer to as clean. There's nothing. I mean, there's not a kind of clear, distinct flavour. Maybe I don't know. It's just not there. It's a very kind of a generic kind of bitter flavour. Nothing special. Nothing really wonderful. It's all right. I mean, it's all right. Um, bitters. I have no problem. I, the thing is, uh, I do like good traditional. Scottish heavies, that's what I used to grow up with, drinking and things like that. So, um, especially when you driver's heavy, or an aloe, or tartan special, a real proper tartan special, not the canned stuff. McEwen, mm, but yeah, a good traditional, properly brewed heavy, not a kind of mass produced gunk that's happened over the years. Yeah, very nice. And I like that kind of bittery, kind of metallic kind of taste you can get with it. So, you are getting a bit of that too, but. There's nothing else really. It's like it's a bit of sweetness in the mid tongue. A bit of sweetness, mid tongue going towards the front of the tongue, the back of the tongue. Well, yes, in the back of the mouth, you're, you're getting that kind of bittery kind of metallic kind of taste that you get with kind of bitters and these kind of more darker beers and things like this. Um, I've spent a lot of time in Russia and uh, their dark beers are very similar like uh, a Jack of a Premium and things like this. Um, very kind of darker metallic -y kind of what we call malty hoppy but it's not it's that kind of clear hoppy taste it's that kind of malty muggy bittery hoppy taste that you get so the the hops provide the bitter and, and the malt kind of gives that kind of like metallic kind of uh, flavor so it means it's a good and of course you can tell by the color i mean how much malt is used to give you that kind of color as well um hops don't really give you the color the malt does so yes um it's an arabian it's uh i mean i mean and the spiel of the untapped app i mean if you want to kind of follow it is get untapped app there is no kind of endorsement or paid endorsement coming from me they, they, i utilize that as well to get extra information on it it's interesting to see obviously what other people think of this beer and uh in the spiel on that app they've got the west country's favorite beer it's an also one over there they were basically saying it was uh the South West favourite, so you've got the South West favourite beer over there, and you've got the West Country's favourite beer, which the West Country's now in the South West, so which, which is the best? Which, which Is it that one or that one? Mm, 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 mm. You know, and of course that's a pale ale and that's a bitter, if you're a bitter drinker you may prefer this, if you're a ale drinker you might prefer that. I mean, you mean, <laughs> it's just a lot of crap to be totally honest, let's, let's cut the bollocks, you know, let the beer speak for itself, never mind the bollocks and the label, but it's an all right beer it's actually getting a bit better because of course as your mouth kind of acclimatizes to the flavors especially the kind of uh, the bitterness then you actually start getting more sweeter notes coming through um yeah yeah and of course the bitterness is actually becoming less and less in the back of the, the kind of uh, the tongue and the throat nothing on the roof of the mouth you're getting no kind of lingering flavors at all in the roof of the mouth um it's a very kind of average nondescript bitter i mean it, it's almost kind of bordering on a session it's uh it's lighter than a john smith's session bitter and uh It's. I don't see the, the the flavors are any more complex or any kind of better. It is lighter just because we can tell by the head and everything else. But yes, it's a it's a very nice beer. Very kind of uh, average. I mean, I could see that being sold in Wetherspoons and things like that, and people just drinking it just. As a bitter, give us a pint of bitter, nondescript. Boom, there you go. That's what's on tap. 
Interesting to see what it would be like at a 4%. So what I will try and do is see if we can try and find it um, in some of the local kind of uh, pubs and uh, we'll give it a go to see if there's any kind of major changes or differences um, in the draft, especially when it's a lower percentage at 4% instead of the 4.5 for the bottle. Um, but yeah, it's fine. What ratings would I give it? Well, I don't like spilling the bottle. I don't like people trying to kind of promote. I mean, I can understand, you know, it's a product and they're probably very proud of it. But let's keep it real. Um, don't put a lot of claptrap and spiel on the back of it. You know, that isn't true. Um, West Country's favourite beer? Well, I hope to God the West Country's got a far better beer than this, you know, than, from that point of view. So I, I think it's doing the kind of area an injustice by claiming that. 3.39? Um, no, I, I, I couldn't even get close to that. I wouldn't even give it a 3. I would probably give it a 2.5. 2.7 max, I could probably give it 2.75, no. Probably 2.7 max, but I think I'd be quite happy roughly about a 2.5, 2.6. It's very kind of run of the mill. It's better than average. I would probably say ever so slightly better than average, but but really not that much. But again, I'd like to see what it's like in tap as well. So I'm just going to go with a nice safe 2.5. Good. Average better. Nothing special. Nothing wonderful. But it's not bad. It's definitely not unpleasant. It's definitely one I could recommend or I could take round to a friend's house or a barbecue and that. And yeah, we could have a, a good few bottles with it. Um, would I present this to a beer lover? I'd like, oh, you need to try this. No, I wouldn't. No. But I'd say, hey, I've got a couple of Buckcombs original beer or brew in the fridge. Fancy one. Fine, not a problem. But I, I, I wouldn't kind of uh, overly promote it. I certainly wouldn't big up on it either. It's, it's just a, a normal standard run of the mill beer. And at the end of the day, if it's brewed lo locally and it's employing local people and bringing kind of uh, an improvement to the local economy, then yeah. At the end of the day, just because it's an average beer doesn't mean that's a bad thing. If you're making a good average beer and you're making it locally and the local kind of uh, community and economy is getting the benefit of that, that's better than all these big multinational rubbish. Um, so I would always say, well, if it's kind of similar to the kind of John Smith's, in my view, is buy this instead of the John Smith's. That type of stuff because more local people more real people will benefit than that kind of over mass produced gunk that you get so yes um good average better um if you fancy maybe getting more of a session kind of better like john smith and that or any of those like boddington's and that then uh go for this instead i'm sure you'll probably be doing uh, a lot more people uh some good drinking this stuff than drinking that and uh, you're probably doing yourself some good because you probably know exactly what's in it and where the hell the alcohol's come from because a good chance that the alcohol in this has actually been brewed you can't really say that with some of these mass produced beers because uh, there's rumours that it's a uh, low brewed beer low alcohol brewed beer with uh, alcohol content topped up in the lab so there you go but anyway it's uh it's an alright beer, 2.5 out of 5. And uh yeah. If you've got uh comments on this beer or any views or opinions, um if you've tried it, then please add it below and uh if there's any beers you would recommend or you'd like me to try and review, then here. Again, pop it down in the comments below and we'll see what we can try and do. Alright. Well, thanks again and uh Bye for now.